Hi guys, welcome back to another video. As you may have seen by the title of this video, um, what I'm going to be doing is removing some corals. Now, I have mentioned it in previous videos, more specifically what corals I want to remove. And I did a bit of a test the other day, I didn't film it. Um, but if you remember, just above this uh, GSP, these brown pallies were taken over. And no matter what I did, I couldn't do it. I had some um, Aptasia exit stuff from NT Labs, um, which didn't really do much for the Aptasia. Uh, this is the stuff, Anti-Aptasia by NT Labs. So I've not used that much, but I have used it a couple of times on the Aptasias, which didn't seem to do a single thing. And I have used it on the brown pallies, which also did nothing. So the other night I came downstairs, I was looking at the tank and they were really annoying me. I thought, right, how, how am I going to do it? Scalpel. So that's what I used. I basically just went in, scraped as close as the rock as I could get. Um, if I couldn't get close enough to the rock, then I basically just tried to cut it off right at the bottom. Um, and I really wish I would have got a, a picture once it all closed up to see how much of a thick mat that they were growing in. Um, it was just crazy. So, that being said, the next that I want to get rid of is these pallies. Um, I think they're Irish cream or something like that. Now I've reduced this one a couple of times and one of the polyps must have dropped off and landed on this bit of rock over here. And now it's starting to colonize that rock, which I really don't want. So same thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go in with a scalpel. I'm going to disturb them all so they all close up. I'll try and pry a few pieces off and hopefully they all rip off in a mat. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, I have got a big bag and a box of carbon on hand. That was the main thing that I was worried about last time with these pallies is that once I've ripped them and damaged them, it would pollute the water and annoy everything else, but it didn't. Everything else was fine. So that's a bonus. I'm just holding the camera up there because of the, behind that massive monstrosity of Aptasia, there's one of my large turbo snails and I just keep seeing a massive cloud of baby making juices coming over. I just thought if I, if I held it here, I might be able to catch it on camera. Um, but yeah, this, this rock that you're looking at in front of you now, that's obviously really close to the light and these zoas are doing brilliant on it. Um, one annoying thing was the last two days this bubble tip Nem decided to walk. He was he was down here. I was fine with him down there. And now he's moved up there just above the gold torch. Which is extremely annoying. No, not gold torch, sorry, gold hammer. Oh. The snail's just produced again, but you can't see it. But that's a positive thing. Hopefully it means some more cleanup crew in the tank. Um, the other tank's doing okay-ish. Still going through a bit of an ugly phase. Um, but everything that I've added in there is doing okay coral-wise. Fish have been spot on, obviously it's a pair of clowns. We knew that they'd be great. Um, and ideally that's that's all I'll be keeping in there anyway. 
Um, I probably would want some conches or conks, whatever you want to call them, uh, just to sift through the sand bed. Keep turning that over. I did toy with the idea of a chalk goby. I've had chalk gobies in the past and they've got great character, like most gobies, but they're just so messy and eventually, you know, I do want to be moving my frags over into that tank and at points that's going to mean that there's going to be frags on the sand bed and I cannot tell you how many frags I lost from my old chalk goby that would just come and spit sand all over it then it'd get lost or he'd pick the frag up and move it to the other side of the tank I've seen it do it it used to really annoy me but I couldn't help but laugh at it um, and yeah it, it was fine if I could get to the frags which he moved but you know quite often he'd move it behind a rock that I couldn't get to so another close up of some of these corals the chalice is not doing too good. The Hollywood Stunner is okay. I do need to move it up on the rock in a bit more flow, a bit more light. Um, but it's not it's not doing horrendous. The Fistful of Dollars, however, that's not focusing, but that's not doing too good. I don't know what that is. I think I might frag that, just snap it up into a few pieces, because it's although it looks like it's grown onto a rock, it's not underneath is completely hollow which I don't really understand how it's managed to do that um, and then yeah everything else the back half of the little zoa rock that's getting annoyed because the Kenya tree keeps falling on it in the in the current Lobo is splitting I wasn't sure how Lobos grew a new head um, But I've been watching this one for a while And it, it did come with just two And as you can see there Part of it is joining up in the middle And then there is another mouth on here I've not been as hot on feeding them As I should be uh, Lobos obviously benefit massively from Good healthy feedings So I will Try and up that a little bit Hawkfish is here. The main reason why I've no longer got any shrimps in this tank. A uh, bit of a overlook and bad bad judgment on my part. You know, he's been in this tank since I set this tank up. He was the first fish in this tank. And um Yeah he just annihilated every shrimp that I put in and it was only the other day when I started really thinking about it because I have got a copper band on order um, I was thinking about the the Aptasia problems I was like right I'm just gonna have to go back to some more peppermint shrimps saw a great deal on them uh, locally but yeah, I'll pick some up and then I started going through everything like, why can I not keep any shrimps alive? I thought, you know, is it my water? Is it something I'm doing? And technically, yeah, it's something I'm doing. I've got the spotted hawkfish in the tank. So, no more shrimp unless he comes out. And catching him will not be an easy task. I uh, can't say that I've tried it, but when I've caught other fish out of the tank, he just hides and obviously he can go underneath the rocks, inside the rocks, he can wedge himself in. So I don't look forward to that. Any suggestions, do let me know in the comments on how to get out a pesky hookfish. So yeah, what I'll do is... I'm sure you don't need to see me taking this down. Um, I'll see if I can get some footage of it as I'm ripping these, these zoas out. One thing I do want to try and remember though is there is 
obviously scrambled eggs up there. I don't want to rip them out. And then there's some others. There is others in here which are just getting overtaken by all these. So I need to be careful what I'm taking out. But that's the beauty of recording. What I'm doing is that I can go back and have a look and look at the video and find out right where were those other zoas that I was looking for. So that's that. And then you may take that big rock out in the middle that you can see with all the aptes you're on. That was just a zoa rock, one of these from Indonesia. It came with lots of different types on it. Um, all low end cheaper things but obviously the aptasia is really doing my head in on there so i might just take that whole rock out get it in the bin and then start afresh put something else there put something new there so i'm starting to lose the battle with aptasia and a little Nasarius snail is taking his journey up to the top of the tank. He'll probably get about three quarters and then throw himself off. That's what they always seem to do. I am just about to feed the tank, so I'm sure he'll pick up and scavenge some bits there. Right, I will pick the camera back up once I've worked out what I'm doing. And I'll show you either while I'm doing it or just after. Thanks, guys. Hi guys, so we're back with the tank after removing as much of the zoas that I could. Um, there's still a few remaining, just get a bit closer. You can see there's still the odd polyp. I've just moved that blast up there because I've got some mushrooms that were starting to sting it. Um, so yeah, there's still a few, few polyps remaining on that side and on the other bit. There's still a few polyps on there as well. Obviously a nice big Aptasia as well. Um, but I haven't done a water change. I haven't added any more carbon to the tank or anything like that. Just scraped off as much as I could. Um, siphoned out what I could. Well, not, not even siphoned. Uh, just with the turkey base. I just plucked up any loose polyps that I could find. Uh, this has been a couple of days since and I have noticed that I've not done a brilliant job of catching all the polyps as down in this corner um, I've got a little frag plug with a mushroom on and you can see one of the pale blue zoa slash pallies that were on this bit um, that's obviously found its way over there I imagine there'll be lots more in the tank as well that are floating around somewhere, which is obviously not ideal. But yeah, that's that's basically what I'm going to do in the future if there's any more. Um, I've always tried to be as careful as I can 
removing zoas because obviously you hear the the horror stories about polytoxin and from what i've read i think that's it's not in every zoa it's not in every pally um there's certain ones such as the Palygrandis, where the the palytoxins are a lot more potent and they are the dangerous ones um but just you know the ones that i've dealt with I haven't noticed anything, you know, none of the corals after I was doing it closed up or anything like that. That was one of the main signs that I thought, yeah, I'm going to do this. If I had seen them signs or corals started struggling a bit, then definitely would have uh, done a water change, done what I could to, to try and stabilize the tank. Um, I'm sure there are other ways, maybe better ways to do it. But like I said, I had tried some Aptasia treatment to get rid of them as well, which didn't really work. So that's just how I do it. Um, and it's it's turned out all right. So now, sort of the fun begins. I will go back in at some point and, you know, take off the rest or whatever ones that I can get off. Um, and now the fun fun side of things is putting new things at the front of the tank. So if you've got any suggestions on what I can put on these ledgers, um, whether it be hammers, chalice, um, or just more zoas, tell me what you think. I'll leave you with a shot of the tank in the evening. Thanks guys.